What's up guys and welcome back to another Revit Tools video. In this video we'll be covering the split tool, both the split element and the split with gap tool. It's pretty simple, it's gonna split, but each do different things. So let's get right into it. The first tool we'll look at is the split element. When you click that, you'll see up at the top, there's a checkbox that is checked. It says delete inner segment. And so really what's gonna happen is you've got this split tool and you're, I've just got some basic walls here and you're prompted to choose a point along a wall in this case where you want to split it in a sense cut it into two walls it's very simple I can click anywhere on any of these walls and I can split so you see you've got a line there and I've got two instances of the same wall type both now split so if I go back to the tool and I and I see yeah I'll, I'll check the delete inner segment now if I if I choose to split this wall again select right there to cut the wall and I'll cut the wall again there and clearly because I was using the same instance of the tool I I didn't cancel out of the tool I chose two different places to split the delete inner segment was able to execute so hopefully that makes sense if you want to use that it's great I oftentimes don't I don't usually try to split something with the intent to cut out the middle I usually just use the split tool to split so if we look at the split with gap this is very useful it's doing essentially what we've just done with the split tool by cutting out the center but doing it all at once so imagine you use the split tool you split the wall and then you push the wall either side away from the other so if you look up here, the joint gap is one inch. To show this a little better, I'll, I'll put it at, at six inches. And if I split the center of the wall there, you can see that now I have a gap in the center that is in fact six inches. So this is very useful. This works with walls, of course curtain walls because they are also walls. I, a lot of times you'll have to cut, or sorry, split walls and curtain walls if you're changing from a new or existing phase to a new a new phase a lot of times you have an existing curtain wall and I can show that real quick I've got any, I change this to existing and maybe I want to change out this top panel to be new construction I essentially have to use an entire new curtain wall so in this case I would just split the curtain wall and I, you could do that just about anywhere but for this case I'll do it there and I'll pull this back to the edge of the mullion there. Of course, it will delete that panel. And I'll drag, actually, I'm sorry, before you do all of that, of course, I'll go back to the split. You'll have to, I'm gonna copy this. I will demo, so date, phase demolish, new construction. I'm going to go to show complete so we can see the correct instance. You see, I've got that cut that split wall there and then I'll paste in the same place and so I've got that curtain wall back in new construction so I'll drag the edge of the existing curtain wall to the edge of the mullion there we'll get rid of that panel and I'll extend this curtain wall to that point I'll turn thin lines off so we can see this a little better and so this is uh, my my new construction and here's my existing and it works perfectly just like that so that's another way I might use a split tool split tool works just the same with walls this is actually new in Revit 2020 it's very nice so I've got a rail just a basic handrail here and before what you'd have to do is go into the sketch and edit it and all this and that but now with Revit 2020 you can use the split tool on a rail without going into the sketch at all and it will work which is just fantastic. So I could, I'm able to easily split this rail very quickly. I could even delete this center portion, and now I've got two rails, which is great. They're, they're isolated from each other, and they work all the same. Again, here's another basic line, the detail line. It could be a model line. I can split this in as many ways as I want. I can delete the inner segment like I did before, just like that, or I can split with the gap of six inches right there 
That's interesting. Apparently the, the split with gap does not work with lines. Good to know. Glad you got to see this on live TV. <laughs> so I've got a floor here and you can't split a floor necessarily, but what I will show is that the, the sketch of the floor. I've got a basic sketch of a floor there. And if I use the split tool, because these are lines, just like any kind of line work, the split tool works all the same. And so I, then I can start adjusting this floor in any way that I want. Use the trim tool, trim this together. It works all the same. And if you've seen one of my previous videos, I created a void that is face-based, or it works face-based, but it's, it's actually line-based. So this is a void that's cut through the floor, so it's in a way created a little step here. And what I can do is because this is line-based, I can actually split it, which is really useful. So the second I split it, a portion becomes uncut. And so now I can move the portion that I'd like to cut. I can go back to cut. I can cut the floor, the void, boom, and I've got a new cut. I can, I can basically do this endlessly. Let's see with, if the split with gap works with line base. No, anything line apparently does not work with the gap. I, I love learning new things, especially, especially when I'm making videos. But the, the split tool does work all the same, the regular split element tool. So that, that's, that's easy to know, good to know. Also, again, I'm going to go take the, the rails to one step farther. I'm going to go to the 3D, and I will actually select this stair. I'll go down to the sunglasses. I will isolate the element. So now I've just got this stair here floating in space. So what we can do with the split element is not split the stair unfortunately that would get too crazy but we just like we did before splitting rails you can split rails on stairs which is really great for document stairs specifically when you have to document rails it, it's really a pain to get the model correctly and efficiently so what we can do here is I in no matter where I select at this point I can select anywhere and the second I do that I get two different rails just like before but now they're attached to the stairs and this is great because I can individually go into these stairs and let's say I don't have I don't have a need for handrails if I've got walls back here I only need them along the the rise and run of the stairs I can delete that portion delete that portion and just for good measure I'll add in my my one foot extension there and there we go that's pretty easy I very quickly able to have stairs with rails by default these are just the rails that come with the stairs by default and you know you you generally want the stairs to generate the rails themselves it's a pain to draw them on and draw it over the stairs and have it join and all that I either have the, st the rails come in with the stairs or I'll go to architecture railing the drop down and then place on stairs and you can just click the stair itself so taking it a step further splitting these rails on the stairs is going to make documenting the stair rails so much easier split tool and split with gap it's pretty simple I, I sure hope you learned something if you did if you would leave a like and also feel free to subscribe I really appreciate it it helps me out a lot I'm gonna continue to put out new Revit videos whether it's new Revit tools Dynamo videos in the future and just kind of random things I come across in my daily life when it comes to Revit Feel free to leave a comment. I'll answer any questions you have below. And hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.